سابقت الأحبة في تلاوته وأنعم حين ألقاه برقياه ولي شيخ إذا ركتلت ألمحه تقبلني من الإعجاب عين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله لا تحزن ولا تستكن فالتمكين للمتقين Don't be sad, don't despair, empowerment will be for the righteous as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us. وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Zukhruf, the verses that we have recited. وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ Talking about the Qur'an. That it is a reminder, it is an honor, it is a guidance for you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and for your people and for those who follow this, your footsteps, and follow the Quran. Wasawfa tusalun, and surely you're going to be questioned and asked about that ni'ma that Allah subhanahu wa taala blessed you, which is the ni'ma of the Quran, which is the ni'ma. Of the Islam, al-aqiba as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us, wal-aqiba to lil-muttaqin. The good end is always for the righteous. So don't despair and don't panic because this is the promise of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We said last time that whenever you read a story in the Quran, it is never meant as a story and just simply it's over with, it's done and no more we're going to worry about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran and every time we recite it every time we act upon it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us for it so nothing in the Quran is to be just there for no benefit or no purpose or no reflection over the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam is one of the stories that describes the nature of the believers and the nature of the disbelievers and the wrongdoers and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the believers and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ruined the plans of the disbelievers and the plans of the wrongdoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ he subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the mother of Musa alayhi salam to nurse him. This is the baby that was born in a time that all the males to be killed, command from Fir'aun, all male yani delivered kids or babies to be killed instantly. Only the females will be saved. And here he is, Prophet Musa alayhi salam is born. His mom is worried so much about him. Command, nurse him for a purpose. Nurse him so you can throw him in the river. Command number one, nurse him. Command number two, If you're worried about him, if you're worried about him getting killed or being slaughtered by Fir'aun, throw him in the river. Make sense out of that. Make sense as a human being. As, as someone who has no faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his power. As someone who takes the command after they understand the reason behind it. Someone would tell you Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made something prohibited. 
What do you do? Why? Tell me why. Explain. But, I think. All of those questioning. Here is a command. Nurse him. If you're worried about him, throw him in the river. As if he knows how to swim, or he's an adult, or someone in the river waiting for him to take care of him, or any of that. None of the above is there. It's like the command is worse than the first choice. Fir'aun is looking, probably there might be a chance that if I hide him somewhere, Fir'aun will not find out. Probably, slim chance. But throw him in the river, that's like 100% he's going to die. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who protects him from Fir'aun, even if he is in the lap of his mother, is the same one who's going to protect him if he is in the river. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to harm Prophet Musa alayhi salam when he was a baby, he would harm him even if he is in the arms of his mother. And if he wants to protect him, he will protect him anywhere. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just need to have that faith and that strong faith, which we call aqeedah, which we call iman. If you have that, then you don't worry about it. So the command, nurse him. If you fear for him, throw him in the river. And look at the glad tidings. لا تخافي ولا تحزني. Prohibitions, two prohibitions. Don't panic. Don't fear. Don't despair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do these two and don't do these two. Don't worry, don't despair. And then a glad tidings. We're going to bring him back to you. When? We don't know. Which means he's not going to die. And he's going to come back to you. How is he going to come back to you? In what shape? And what is he going to be? وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And he's going to be a messenger. Subhanallah. She followed the command. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who controls the wind, the one who controls the river, the one who controls the hearts, destined this little baby to fall in the hand of the person who is looking to kill the baby. Look at the, yani, the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saved him in the river. The whole purpose is to keep him away from that tyrant. He fell in the hands of that tyrant. In his house. But the one who subhanahu wa ta'ala controls the hearts put the love of Prophet Musa alayhi salam in the heart of the wife of Fir'aun. And if the wife likes something as we said before, no husband can stop her from getting it. I don't care how much power you have. I don't care who wears the pants in the family. If the wife wants something, I guarantee you she will get it. One way or the other. Fir'aun, the one who claims he is God. He could not win against his wife. What was the result? To be raised in the house of Fir'aun. The one who wants to kill him, now is the one who's feeding him. Now the one who's taking care of him, subhanAllah. The mother of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. She had the choice now to nurse him in the castle, in the castle, not in her house or her shack or whatever, because they were slaves. People were enslaved by Fir'aun, so they don't have nice places or nice things. She had the choice to be in the castle or to stay at her home and everything will be paid. She will be paid and taken care of her and Prophet Musa alayhi salam when he was a baby and everything from the one who promised to kill every baby miracles we believe in miracles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's speaking and subhanallah and look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we want to bless those people who are oppressed on earth those people who are weak our plan is we want to bless them was that it no and we're going to make them leaders. 
leaders from being a slave to being a master. And we're going to make him the one who inherit the land. Before, they have to rent, they have to buy, they have no ownership. Now they are in charge and they own everything from those masters. Flip from slave to master, from a person who doesn't own to an ownership. Is that it? And we're going to affirm them so hard. So those people that they won against, they cannot come back and win against them. No one can win against them because they are empowered and they are established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's the other warning? And we're going to show that tyrant, those oppressors, and their soldiers, and their supporters, we're going to show them that what they are planning to save or fearing for, we're going to destroy it. Not only we're going to empower those, but we're also going to destroy those. With condition. It's not just like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ A promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who are believing and doing righteous that He will make them inherit the land as He made people before them. Like Prophet, uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salam. وَلَنُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِ ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ And this religion will be firmly established. The religion of Tawheed. لا إله إلا الله ولا يبدل أنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا and the fear that they used to have in the weakness that they used to have will be changed to security and peace and safety with a condition يا بدونني لا يشركون بي شيء to worship me and only me without associating partners this is to tell you the importance of توحيد this is to tell you the danger of شرك this is to tell you how to put the emphasis on that. How to work so hard for that. To build your life around that. We're talking about weak people. And we're talking about strong people. And we're talking about fights. And we're talking about killing and everything. And everything pours into La ilaha illallah or negating that word. All the destruction will be by negating it. And all the affirmation and the empowerment will be by affirming La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Here is the deal. Prophet Musa alayhi salam and his people, the believers, the believers after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Prophet Musa alayhi salam to leave, those believers who were with him, they were complaining. We had a miserable life before you came to us and it did not change after we followed you after we became believers it's still bad life it's still oppression it's still we are not really blessed or happy this is picture this you're talking believers following prophet who is alive among them think about us when you find people saying why and why and why and questioning Look at the answer of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Look at the patience. Look how he deals with the people. It's not like, oh really? This is how you talk? How bad your words are. Don't you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is no reprimanding. There is no attack. Nothing. قَالْ عَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَنْ يُهْلِكَ عَدُوَّكُمْ وَيَسْتَخْلِفَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't worry, He's going to destroy your enemy. And He's going to make you leaders and give you that land. Is it going to stop there? No. With the same condition. فَيَنظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ And He's going to look, is that La ilaha illallah going to be established and continue to be established? Or you're going to establish it in the beginning and give it up at the end? You're going to lose it. If you do that, you're going to lose it. فَيَنظُرَ وَيَنظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ He's going to observe and watch you. Just like the other uh, ayah that I have recited. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after that, they established the prayer, follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and 
basically established a religion to continue to have that. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give them that with the condition of what? Patience. They have the faith, they have the yaqeen that Prophet Musa alayhi salam promised them or taught them. Now they need the patience to follow the commands and stay away from the prohibitions. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Sajda, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا Number one, sabr. وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوْقِنُونَ They have the faith and they have the sabr. If sabr and faith get engaged, get married, what do you end up with? Leadership. The baby will be leadership. So if you have faith, you got to have patience. You can never have faith without patience. You can never have faith without patience even if you are doing something not even Islamic. A disbeliever has to have uh, patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us when Luqman alayhi salam was commanding his son, he said, Ya Bunay, aqam is salah. وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ Oh my son, establish the prayer because that is the number one thing that proves you know what La ilaha illallah means and you act upon that word. Then enjoin good and forbid evil because if you don't enjoin good and, you forbid, good and forbid evil then your faith is not real. It's fake. Where is the love? of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you know he loves this, and you can do something about it, how come you don't do it? If you know he hates that, and you can stop it, how come you don't do anything about it? What kind of love is this? So, prayer, enjoin good, forbid evil, have patience, same way. What happened to those followers of Prophet Musa alayhi salam? Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْقَوْمَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْتَضْعَفُونَ مَشَارِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغَارِبَهَا الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ الْحُسْنَى عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We have made the group of believers who followed Prophet Musa alayhi salam who were weak and oppressed and enslaved we made them inherit the whole land, west and east. The blessed land, west and east. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his promise and his word. And what is that kalima? And this promise is to, the first part is to make them leaders and make the land theirs. The second part, to destroy Fir'aun, right? وَدَمَّرْنَا مَا كَانَ يَصْنَعُ فِرْعَوْنُ وَقَوْمُهُ وَمَا كَانُوا يَعْرِشُونَ And indeed we have demolished, we have destroyed everything Fir'aun and his people used to build and everything that they used to cultivate and do. This is the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. How can we do something about ourselves and our situations? Number one, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the messengers. He said, الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهِ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Those who deliver the messages and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear Him and they don't fear anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is talking about the messengers, it's talking about us because we are the followers of the messengers and when the messengers die, the followers keep the message alive. أَلَا فَلْيُبَلِّغْ مِنْكُمْ الشَّاهِدْ الْغَائِبْ The one who's present, let him pass the message to the one who is not present. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that is number one. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you fulfill the commands and makes you stay away from the prohibitions. That's number one for empowerment. Number two, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I know He loves me. I have no doubt that He loves me. He created me to start with. He made me a Muslim. He sent messengers for me. He revealed books for me. He gave me mind and brain to think and to analyze. He gave me all the bounties and all the gifts. He subjugated earth for me. Everything on earth is for me and you. 
That if you don't call that love, if you tell your son, son, everything I own is yours. You don't call that love? I don't know what love is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all that. So I have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me to start with. But this love can never be there and last there if the person is rebellious. You may do something to your children, but if your children don't listen to you anymore, you're not going to keep everything for them. There is love. It has to be exchanged. Now, when something bad happens to you, and you know you're doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you to do, then I still feel good. Because I know a lover... I know a lover will not harm the person he loves. How can you harm someone you love? It may appear that you're harming, but you're not. Your son needs an operation. You put him on a table to slice him open. He's crying, he's begging, he's scared, yet you tie him down, you hold him down, you're dying from the inside. You're doing all of this because you know it's good for him, because you love him and what's the outcome of this is for his good. We do that as parents and we accept it and we believe in it. How, can, how come we don't make that our belief when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something to us that appears to be bad and negative? How come we don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing this for our own good? This is why he's doing it because he wants to forgive you, because he loves you, because he wants to elevate you, because he wants to clean you, he wants to purify you, he wants to strengthen you. If you don't fall as a child and feel the pain when you scratch yourself or cut yourself, you're going to freak out if it happens to you when you're an old man and you have no idea what pain is. So when you see certain things happening and it looks to you that it's wrong, don't think of it this way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has plans. He created you. He knows what's good for you and what's not good for you. If you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you trust him, then everything will be perfectly all right in your life. So if you have a problem in your work, if you have a problem at home, if you have a problem with your health, I know deep inside that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is choosing the best for me. And I know deep inside without doubt that he loves me. Therefore, I'm patient, I am content, I say alhamdulillah all the time. Just like he loves me subhanahu wa ta'ala, I love him. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the believers love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly more than anyone else who loves whatever he loves because the believers know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is real and he's capable and he loves you. So, based on that love, whatever I do, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I know, for instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves beauty, he wants me to look good, so I look good. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes me to look good. So if a woman knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants her to look good for her husband, she should look good for her husband. And the husband does the same thing. It's all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not why. It's not because. It's not he doesn't or she doesn't. It is love. Everything is based on love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا My life, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death, everything to Allah. When I go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I go to work, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I sleep, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I speak, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm quiet, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I play, whatever you do, it's because I am governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. That is number one in our life. Why I'm doing this? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me and I love him. And the real love is, the definition of real love is to do what your lover loves even if you hate it. 
Again, to do what your lover loves, even if you hate it. Most of us do how? It's because they like, you know, your wife asks you, for instance, can you uh, go to the store and get me something? Uh, you don't have much to do and uh, your life is so wonderful and uh, you're not sick, you're not tired, nothing. Say, oh sure, yeah, I'll go ahead. And you go do it. Sometime you're coming from work and you're tired, you drop everything. She asks you, can you please go get me something? I don't know, now you come and ask me. And it. You call that love? Even if it's justifiable, it's not love. Love is to do what your lover loves or likes, even if you don't like it. You would control yourself and you would remember that she is your wife and she is asking you for something and she likes that thing to happen. And she realized that you are tired and everything. You go and you do it. Just like waking up at Fajr time. You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that time. And you know it is the time that he rewards the most for. So I am sleepy, but I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than my sleep, so I wake up. I fast during summer. Yes, it's a long hours. Yes, I work hard. Yes, it's very difficult, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it. And he ordained it, so I fast and I don't complain. Because I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the true love. Third one, tawakkur. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much do you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is something that we can we should feel from prophet nuh alayhi salam his story qala ya qawmi in kana kabara alaykum maqami wa tadhkiri bi ayati allah fa ala allah tawakkalt he said well if 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 you feel that all my admonitions and all my advices and everything you see it in the wrong way and you don't like it and you go in to kill me and harm me and do all of those things fine do what you want because i'm relying on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here is the challenge. فَأَجْمِعُوا أَمْرَكُمْ وَشُرَكَاءَكُمْ Gather all of your soldiers, all of your power and everything. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُنْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَمْرُكُمْ غُمَّ Then don't make it secret. Make it public. I'm not worried because I'm relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then judge and do whatever you want to do. Biggest challenge from one man, from Prophet Nuh alayhi salam to the entire world at that time. And what was the result? When he relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْنَا يَا أَرْضُ بْلَعِ مَاءَكِ وَيَا سَمَاءُ أَقْلِعِ وَغِيضَ الْمَاءِ وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَاسْتَوَتْ عَلَى الْجُودِي وَقِيلَ بُعْدًا لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ The flood and everything, a ship going through flood, the, ma the, 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 the wave is like mountains, mountains, and no ship is going to sail in this. But tajri bi a'yunina, the supervision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the watchful eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with it all the way. And then this rain that came from the sky and this water that gushed from earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command, stop, swallow. Ship on top of a mountain. Where is everybody? Anybody home? Zero inhabitants on earth except those on the ship. That is what tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Believe in al-qada wal qadr, the fourth one. Believe in the predestiny, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for you. I want you to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing anything He wants. He's merciful, but he is capable of punishing you if he wants. Of giving you whatever you want, if he wants, if you deserve. So if you're lacking something, don't ever say, oh, the doctor told me there is 10% chance of life. Okay, they say, well, this is factual. It's based on, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to say, no, they're liars, they're horrible. No, I'll take the word of the doctor, but the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bigger than that. And on top of that, if there is 10% chance of life, I'm going to hold on to that 10% and build hope on that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable to reverse everything and make the person healthy. This is faith. This is faith and this is what we call believing in qada wal qadar. If the time of that person is going to come, 
It's going to come. Even if the doctor tells you 100% chance of success, you end up dead. Right or wrong? How many times the, 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 the doctors would guarantee you an operation, successful operation, you end up the complete opposite? A lot. And how many times people would tell them that there is possibility of life and they come alive because إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ When time comes, no doctor, no human being, no jinn, no one can stop the command. If time comes, it will come. If we have that belief in qada and qadr, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already wrote for us, He gave us the life and He told us when we're going to be born and how long we're going to live and what our sustenance is, believe in that. Believe in that and act upon that and that's what makes you, inshallah, successful human being. Focus on that day of judgment, number five. Focus on the hereafter. We're not living here forever. If you are moving, if, if your job puts you in another state or in another country for one month, you're not going to look for real estate there and buy a home and invest in companies and all of that. If someone tells you, man, you got good opportunities here. It's flourishing, mashallah. You go, no, Yaqi, I'm, I'm leaving after one month. Why do I have to do all of this? My home is in Irving. Logical. And someone comes and tells you, Yaqi, give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yaqi, be good. Yaqi, control yourself. Yaqi, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a day of judgment. You're not going to live forever. There is something after that. Focus on that. When one person was asking a sheikh, why when people are reminded of death they don't like it you know what his answer was they have fixed and beautified this worldly life and they have ruined and destroyed and did not do anything for the hereafter life فَكَرِهُ أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنَ الْخَرَابِ مِنَ الْعُمْرَانِ إِلَى الْخَرَابِ So they hated to move from something that is so beautiful and so taken care of to something that is completely destruction. Because they did not work for the hereafter. So focus on the hereafter. If you want this dunya, how much are you going to get? Anyone can guess? What's written for you? That's a condition before that. Believe in qada wal qadar. What's written for you, you're going to get it. And you're not going to get it all. I mean, this world, you're not going to get it all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give you a, a wife, but, I mean a righteous wife, but evil kids. He might give you a righteous wife, no kids. He might give you beautiful kids, beautiful wife, no job, or no, not much money to live on. He might give you lots of money, lots of children, good wife, bad health, you're sick. So you cannot have it good from all ways if you're focusing in this world. Now if you're focusing on the hereafter and you have any of those problems, it will not bother you. Because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Go back to that rule. He loves me so whatever he is doing. So I am sick and I don't have the best job and I don't have this but I feel content. I'm happy because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me and he had chosen this life for me because it is better for me. Because maybe if he makes me a rich person, I become evil. If you're a millionaire, don't you think that's a test? I mean, you want to enjoy your life and it's not haram. But what are you going to enjoy in this life that is not haram? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Where? The name a place that you can really, really go have fun without bear, being buried in haram. Where? Every time I think of a vacation, I can't find one. I can't, especially nowadays. Evil is everywhere. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. Evil is everywhere because of our actions. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to empower you. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of you. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you leaders and make you inherit the land. Establish what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Don't come and tell me we are doing wonderful and we're making dua and we fasted the month of Ramadan and millions are raising their hands. That's not, I mean there's something defective. There's something wrong there. 
So basically you're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not fair. He's not treating you right. You're perfecting everything he wanted. And he's not giving you what you want. What an evil thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we don't blame ourselves, I don't know who else we would blame. So focus on the hereafter is what we need to do. And the focus on the hereafter makes us focus on a righteous home. I take care of myself. I take care of my wife. I take care of my children. I make sure my children marry the righteous wife. And I make sure my daughters marry the righteous man. And I make sure that everything in the house is built around the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how you build society. First, protect yourself. How can you protect a family when you don't know what's right and wrong? How can you protect your family when you don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you come and complain to me and you say, Shaykh, I want you to talk to my uh, son. He's not obeying me. And then I said, okay, uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, where's your son go? Oh, uh, he's uh, Arlington High, let's say. Oh, Arlington High, wonderful. So you want me to talk about what? I mean, how can I make sense to that son of yours who has never been to an Islamic school where at least he would hear the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I change? How can I make someone scared of something if he's not scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I come and tell you ittaqillah? The word ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is sufficient to make a person collapse. Sufficient to make a person cry. Sufficient to make a person change. But if you don't have that, how can I start? Okay, uh, okay, what's the other thing? And I said, uh, so mashallah, yani I'm sure that you are teaching him and taking care of him at least at the home. He said, oh, Sheikh, you know, I work 16 hours. <laughs> mashallah. So 16 hours, so when do you see your son? Uh, you know, I don't really see him that often. You know, when I come, he's asleep. And when I go, he's asleep. And uh, and yeah, Sheikh, I want you to talk to his mother to teach him. And then I said, where are you? Where do you fit? Where do you fit? You're not taking care of yourself. You're not taking care of your son. You know, how can I, how do you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build a righteous home like that? A person, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a good life, when you're obedient, he would give you a simple and easy, facilitate your life in a job that makes you fulfill the obligation without hardship. That's easiness in life. You should be so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have a job that gives you an opportunity to go, for instance, for uh, khutbah, to attend the khutbah, or to take off for Eid, or for something like that. This is a ni'mah. This is a ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated for you. You should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. It's not money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create you for this world. Salah, salah. Don't tell me uh, why. Oh, you know, when do you pray, brother? Oh, uh, whenever I have time. And yeah, put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the shelf. Astaghfirullah. And whenever you have time for an said, okay, how would you feel if you wake up one, time, one morning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you, astaghfirullah, you know, it doesn't fit, but if he told you, I'm taking care of the whole world, today I'm not taking care of your heart pumping. Boom, get that season. How would you like that? Would you excuse? I mean, billions of people have to be taken care of. You know, this heart is not pumping by itself because mashallah it has a Toyota or a Lexus engine or BM or whatever uh, it is pumping with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command flesh flesh pumps thousands and thousands of liters of blood for 70 80 100 years 900 years before what kind of power is this what kind of God is this what kind of creation is this we don't reflect about that. And when it comes to salah, when you have time, you will pray. Or some cute ones will say, when I go home, I pray all the prayers. Because, Sheikh, in my work, I cannot pray. There is no place to pray. I leave that job. You want to be a leader? Obey the ruler. Then he will make you a leader. Without him? You're going to keep going down, 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 even if you raise your hand as high as the sky. It's not going to happen. And that is the answer to anyone who's looking for empowerment. I would say something, brothers and sisters, in conclusion with this 
If we reflect on the Quran, we understand the ayat that I have recited today in Surah Al-Zukhruf. فَإِمَّا نَذْهَبَنَّ بِكْ فَإِنَّا مِنْهُمْ مُنْتَقِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, If we take you, yani you die, we're gonna vent you. We're gonna punish them and take care of those people who are mistreating you. Or, أَوْ نُرِيَنَّكَ الَّذِي وَعَدْنَاهُمْ Or we're gonna show you what we promised we will do to them because we can. فَإِنَّا عَلَيْهِمْ مُقْتَدِرُونَ But whether we take you and whether we punish them and whether we show you that or we don't, it's not up to you. What's the question? فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ The command is hold fast to that Quran. That's your job. That's what you created for. Don't worry about what I do to other people or even do to you. Your job is to hold fast to that Quran. And the Quran told you, if you do good, I'll take care of you. And if you don't, I will do the following to you. You know all of that. So your job, follow and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide. Just like you are in a country and the president is the one who finally decides war or no war. You want to go to war, he wants to go to war, everybody wants to go to war, but the final decision is for the president to declare war. So all of us, we wait for that. We accept it in a level, human level, and we don't accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to destroy or to empower, and that is the lack of our faith. So you hold fast to that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left it with that, فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ And this is my final advice to you. You want to not worry. You, not, you want to not despair. You want to be empowered. You want to have a wonderful life. Hold fast to this religion. Hold fast to the Quran and go straight. And inshallah, you would live a wonderful life at home, outside home, in your country, until you die. That's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills His promise. We have no doubt in that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are steadfast in good and in bad. It's not like when something bad happens, you flip. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ He's on the edge. Some people, he is standing right here at the edge of that table. عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٍ When good thing happens to him, life is wonderful. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It can never be better than this. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَىٰ If something bad, in قَلَبَ عَلَىٰ somersault. He does a somersault, flips backward, fell from that edge. What happens to him? خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ He lost this world and the hereafter. Just like the person who's trying to behave and look like a woman. He lost being a man and he's not going to be a perfect woman. Isn't that what it is? You're going to fake yourself and you're going to change your appearance and you're going to do whatever you're going to do. You still looked upon as a Muslim. So why fake it and lose both? One person, he was standing for profiling and such simply because his name is Muhammad. That's what he was saying. So he was complaining, he said, I have nothing to do with Islam, I have nothing, and you know. And one person behind him told him, you may have nothing to do with Islam, but your name says it all. So, you're not accepted here, and you're not accepted here. You lost both. And I say, hold fast to the religion, know that you're gonna die, and when you die, at least you have something to look forward to. This life is short. You can die before you exit from here, you can have an accident as soon as you get in your car, you may sleep and never wake up. Stem sick, hold fast to the revelation, to the Quran, to the Sunnah, 
and always breathe la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah talk about it teach it learn it understand it this is the way and that's the only way may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live on la ilaha illallah die on la ilaha illallah resurrect on la ilaha illallah nas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lana wa lakum athabat wa subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik to watch this or to pass it to someone you can go to imamhasankhalil.com or you can go to sunnafollowers.net or just like what the brother said you can go to urbanmasjid.org in case you uh, could not attend sometimes we have this class every wednesday and we will have a different topic inshallah that would be the conclusion of our topic don't panic don't despair empowerment is for whom believers empowerment is for the righteous we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those righteous jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh